Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I hope my 3D printing noise is not bothering you. It is producing a few more miniatures for me in every cycle. Every layer that it prints creates a little bit of noise. But anyway, I'm getting questions almost on a daily basis. People are so confused about how to turn this Pro 1000 into a printer that's affordable to use. Well, the Pro 1000 is an outstanding printer. It has almost what I would call artificial intelligence. It takes care of every bit of maintenance it requires to ensure that when you then begin printing, you're going to pretty much be guaranteed to have great results, assuming, of course, all of your pre-settings are perfect. That is a requisite. You have to have a monitor fully calibrated. That means it is correctly displaying your color values. First thing you do, of course, as always, with any new printer, you're going to print a standard image. I would recommend QImage Ultimate because it handles color management for you automatically, especially on a Canon printer. You're going to probably want to print your first standard image. That is, of course, after you have installed a print head, the inks, you have run a nozzle check, you have run a head alignment, and everything is hunky dory. Now you want to print something that will determine how good a performer this printer is. And for that, I recommend the standard image, which I have available on my Facebook group. Make sure to join that. There's about 8,000 almost people already members of that group, and they interchange uh, all sorts of information with each other. It's, it's very invaluable. So we have our Pro 1000. We're going to run a standard image. We're going to open it in Q Image Ultimate. We're going to use Pro Luster paper from Canon. We're going to choose that printer, Pro 1000, Pro Luster, letter size. And now we have two choices. Either we let the driver control color, and for that, what it's going to do, it's going to match it to the proper Canon Pro Luster ICC profile. Or you can tell Q Image to control color, and it's going to turn off color management automatically in the driver. And that is something you absolutely need to have. If you're going to use QImage or Photoshop as the one controlling color through an ICC profile, be it the OEM ProLustr profile or some other profile, say you're using a similar but different type of paper, you're going to have to make sure that your driver is not double profiling. QImage Ultimate will handle that for you automatically. There is no need to worry ever again about double profiling. That seems to be one of the biggest problems beginners seem to have whenever they begin printing. They forget about that because they just don't know what that means and they don't know that it's a prerequisite. You cannot have both the driver and the application you're printing from both controlling colors, one or the other. But what people are mostly concerned about is the cost of operating this printer. Well, yeah. They're absolutely correct. It's a very expensive printer to operate. It is a printer that is meant to be used daily for you to get the most out of that expensive ink producing prints. In other words, if you let the printer sit idly, it's going to run cleaning cycles prior to printing, which are very likely going to waste more ink than it takes to print this size print. You're going to probably waste three to four times the amount of ink just to get it just to get it prepped up to print that image it makes no sense folks you need to print daily on this printer you need to be producing prints almost daily and you're going to be using your ink of course but the take home message here is that that ink has to be put to use to create prints not to maintain your printer one way or another you're going to use your ink there's no way to avoid that no way to avoid that, okay? Please take that home. There is no way to avoid that. This is not an Epson printer you can neglect for a couple of weeks and then come back and it may even run a cleaning cycle for you or probably not. And if you're lucky, it'll print a perfect result. That's Epson for you. You can choose one over the other for just that one criteria. 
This printer, however, is not going to allow you to do that. It's going to make sure your printhead is free of any clogs before it begins to print. So as soon as you press that print button, it's going to go through agitation cycle to make sure your pigment is agitated. It's going to do a nozzle check internally, nozzle by nozzle. That's going to take minutes. And then finally, if it passes the cleaning cycle, it's going to begin to print and your result will be perfect. Okay. But I better be printing, say, 10, 15 prints a day so that I don't repeat that over and over and over. And so the ink that I use for those 10 to 15 prints a day is solely for the creation of those 10 to 15 prints and not to fill my maintenance cartridge, which is what would normally be happening if you only print once a week. Okay? Now, you want to get away from the $60 per cartridge cost. So you have several options. Of course, if you are made of money, then the option or you are basically selling lots of prints, whether it is through a business or whether it is through your own photography business, you're going to want to use OEM. There's no way around that. So 60 bucks every time you change a cartridge. Now, I decided that's too much. I am not printing for money. I am printing to create videos for you guys to enjoy and hopefully learn something from. So I need to reduce my operating costs. Hey, Precision Colors, when are you going to come up with an ink set for the Pro 1000? Well, that took a year. Okay, that took a year. Finally, we decided let's go ahead and try to refill this cartridge. There is no hole anywhere, and there's nothing inside that prevents me from injecting ink, pressurized ink. And then create a vacuum, pressurize ink again, create another vacuum. You'll be constantly pulling back and forth on that big 100 ml syringe. You need a special tip to be able to bypass that poppet valve. But once you do that, you can just push in some ink, pull back, create a vacuum, push in some ink. And if you started when you were empty, then you will be able to inject fully the 80 ml that you require to get a full load of ink. Now, what about a chip? Well, chips became available pretty much instantly from China, and they did not work. They worked maybe once, or they just did not work at all, but they were not auto or semi-permanent or permanent chips as they were being sold to be. No, they did not work. So only single-use chips was the availability back then. So yeah, your chip just declared the cartridge empty, these cartridges actually do go empty when the chip says I'm empty. Isn't that something? You're not throwing away ink when you throw away one of these cartridges with a dead chip. But why throw it away? You can refill it. You can pop this white cap off, insert a chip in the compartment. A single-use chip costs you about $13. Put about $15 worth of ink in there. Pop the cap back on it. Insert it back into your printer. And you're good to go. You spent about maybe $30 to refill each cartridge. That's better than 60 So now you're continuing to print at half the cost. And, of course, you're helping the environment by not throwing away these cartridges that will be here another two or three millennia. Okay? They're not going to disappear. So another option had to be made available. And we decided, wait a minute, wouldn't it be easier to simply drill a hole here? Oh, yeah. Five thirty seconds of an inch, use a regular Canon plug that we use for some of the other Canon printers, the smaller ones that have individual cartridges that ride on the printhead assembly. Yeah, five thirty seconds of an inch hole, put it in the upper left or the upper right corner. That's the thickest part of this little enclosure. And there's nothing in there. It's just space. It just holds ink. So drill that hole, clean it up, put a plug in, make sure it fits tight. And now you can just remove the plug with a syringe full of ink, inject the ink, put the plug back on it. Of course, you're going to change the chip and put it back in your printer. Oh, isn't that easier? Of course it is. Well, we want it even better. We were getting tired of buying these chips. Precision Color says, Canon allows you, and this is for legal reasons, allows you to go beyond empty which is not recommended you do that with something like this so can we do as we could do with maybe 
some of the other kind of printers disable the chip. That means you disable the chip so that it no longer can display ink levels. It is recognized as chroma optimizer, but I see nothing as far as levels go, even though I have a tank full of ink, okay? It will not show anything. At that point, it is solely used for identification of the color of that particular cartridge. Well, you could do that, but there is a process. There is a process. If your chip has become empty, it cannot be disabled. Okay, you cannot. You have to, from the very beginning, that you begin to use this printer, you have to look ahead that at some point, I think I'm going to disable my chips. Well, don't wait until it's empty because it's too late. If you have a cartridge whose chip has not reached empty, but say has reached low, maybe that'll work. The best condition is before it reaches low. So you make that decision, okay? Make that decision now, not afterwards when it's too late. You'll have to buy a new cartridge and start again. But say you have your 12 cartridges and they're all about 50%. Drill those holes, get them prepped, put the plugs on it, order your inks from Precision Colors. You can order either full OEM or the mix or the hybrid set, which contains four OEM colors. That is Chrome Optimizer, yellow, red, and blue, and the rest are third party. Those four colors and the clear coat could not be matched by anything available in U.S. labs. So they had to resort to using OEM. And he has a source for that, so don't worry. There are always going to be available OEM inks. You could go full OEM, it'll cost you twice as much. So for about 45 bucks, you're going to go ahead and not only get that chip, maybe a little bit higher than that, get that chip and also fill with OEM. Well, that's still better than $60. But we want to not use the chips any longer. We don't want to have to buy a chip every single time. So here is the process. Please listen carefully. You have to follow this. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I don't care how many extra cartridges you have obtained from whomever. They better not be red x If you put them in your printer and you get a red X, get rid of that cartridge. Get rid of the chip. You can save the cartridge, drill it, and prep it for someone else to put a chip in it. But... Don't throw it away. It's, it's, it's bad, okay? It's really is, it really is bad. So if you have a warning, a yellow warning, that's the yellow exclamation point, you're okay. Drill it, top it off immediately. If it's partially full, and how do you know that? You put it on a scale. Anything above 32 grams. To make it easy, just put the cartridge, whatever it weighs, above 32 grams. That's how much ink is left. A gram just about equals one ml of ink. So figure that out. As long as it's above 32 grams, you still have ink in your cartridge. Initially, you need to do the math and figure out how much ink would it take to reach 80 ml of ink. If I am at 42 grams and 32 grams is empty, I have 10 ml. So I need to add 70 ml of ink, okay? That's how simple it is. And of course, do the math. It's going to be different depending on which cartridge. Or just add enough ink to sort of bring it above like maybe 112 is fully loaded. Maybe 80, 90 uh, grams of total weight. Just as long as you have enough ink that will be above the so-called low warning. Low warning kicks in when you have about 20 ml of ink inside the cartridge left. So here's the catch. You have to make sure you have ink in the cartridge at all times. And you cannot be at red X. Red X, that's it. That cartridge is actually physically empty. Okay? Remove it. Start all over again. Sorry. Or acquire some other empty cartridge as hopefully one of those will be above empty. Anything else that's above empty, top it off. Okay? Top it right off you'll be good. If it was already low, 
or before low, eventually it will reach low because the printer internally, it is actually measuring every milliliter of ink that has passed through it since you originally installed a particular cartridge. It knows exactly how much ink has passed through it. So it's computing. It's computing these conditions as you print. So the low condition, because it has already measured so much ink has passed through, the cartridge must be low. It's not really looking inside the cartridge. It has no clue what you have done. You've topped it off. So it's going to then declare low, and you print. And at some point, it's going to say, wait a minute. I knew how much ink I should have had when I declared the cartridge low. But for some reason, it just keeps refilling my internal reservoir. Something is really weird. I'm going to allow you to continue to print. That's what's happening. And you're going to print, 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 and you're going to be worried. Don't worry. Just let it. Let that low warning stay there as long as it wants to. Just make sure you keep refilling your cartridges. That's the key. And at some point, it's going to throw its hands up in the air. It's going to go, what the heck is going on here? I've used twice as much ink as I should have been able to use. That cartridge should have been empty, but it's not. It's not because you have been a good lad and a good lass and have continued refilling those cartridges. It'll throw an error on your screen. Right here, you will see 1753 error. Press the second button below the power button. Five seconds, you will see the words processing. Once that finishes processing, that chip is now disabled. Now that chip's internal code, in this case, Chroma Optimizer, that Chroma Optimizer chip's individual code has been recorded in the printer's memory. I cannot give you this cartridge with a disabled chip and let you use it. Your printer has never seen this particular chip. So it's not going to see it as disabled. You may be able to disable it. It may give you a 1753 error. Who knows? But it may not. It may not. So when you disable your chips, they have to be your own cartridges, okay? Your own cartridges and, of course, your own chips. That's basically it. At this point, once you disable that chip, then you need to keep track of your ink usage. And the only way to do that is to weigh your cartridges. Remember, 32 is empty. 112 is full. Anything in between, that means you have that much ink. Do the math. Subtract that weight by 32, and you get a balance of how much ink is left in the cartridge. I still didn't want to do that. So we needed to have some other option to tell us, to warn us, hey, you are running out of ink in one cartridge. You are low. And you have seen those before in my previous videos. Now, here's what you do. Once you install those sensors, you have a series of lights. You have two boards. Each board corresponds to six channels. The first six on the left and the second six on the right side. When you have a green go light, that means that cartridge is above low warning. When that green go light goes out and the corresponding white light underneath it is actually in line with it, goes on, that means that cartridge should now be filled. And that is all you have to worry about. Now, all you have to do now is maintain your cartridges above that low level, which is about 20 ml of ink left in the cartridge, and wait for a light to come on. The green light will go off, the white light will come on. And it sort of starts to blink when it gets to that, that margin of, I'm almost slow, but not quite. You will get a blinky uh, change, green and then white and then green and then white and eventually as you print a little bit longer it will go fully white take the door fuller out the printer will go into change mode and then you remove that cartridge and add 60 ml of ink that'll get you up to 80 or just under 80 and you'll be good to go put that fuller back in of course you're going to insert the cartridge back in and then insert the fuller back on the hinge and you will then go back into printing mode and you'll be good to go. At that point, you can continue printing as if nothing happened. The cartridge now, the sensor for the cartridge will be green, and you'll be good to go. That is all there is to it.
the sensor is detecting density inside the cartridge. And when it sees a certain drop in density, it declares itself as low. Now, originally when the sensors came from China, they were all at slightly different calibration levels and PC did not know that. And so from now on, when you buy a sensor set, they will all be pre-calibrated for you. You do not have to do that. I had to do that because I got the early version of the sensors. Okay, so be aware of that. Don't spend time trying to calibrate them. They're already pre-calibrated to give you the low warning right about when you have 20 ml of ink left. All right, that is it. This is wonderful now. This makes my life so easy. Nothing to worry about from now on. So again, I hope this made it more crystal clear, if you will. There's always going to be questions. I am absolutely sure I will get more questions regarding this because not everybody's going to watch this video. That's simply the way it goes. All right, so thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, as always, happy printing, everybody, and bye-bye.